Hello again folks, this is Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair and today's victim is going to be a pretty cool uh, 1958 Edsel Corsair uh, AM radio. This is of course uh, formerly an AM radio, it is now AM FM with 180 watts maximum peak power uh, to drive up to four speakers. It's got an auxiliary input um, added to it. And uh, one thing I should say uh, before we get too far in this video is that I'm currently troubleshooting a problem I'm having with my recording system and I'll show you a quick uh, just a quick picture of that. Uh, I have a rather, uh, a rather elaborate uh, audio recording system which is process processing the sound that you're hearing right now. And here's that system right behind me. Uh, all those, all those lights that flash when I speak, as you can see, uh, that's all part of my uh, recording system for the uh, videos that I make. So, um, understandably, it's going to take a little while to get everything tweaked up. And I'm currently having a little problem with the uh, with the right front channel cutting in and out. Uh, it looks like I may have found that problem, but if not, uh, that would be the reason that the uh, that the right right front channel acts a little bit funny is because I'm troubleshooting a problem with my equipment. So we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to me now that I've. Uh, Offer that disclaimer, and we're going to go ahead and uh, and run this uh, a, a, a 1958 Edsel radio through its paces. Um, I've got all five push buttons set to FM stations. So, uh, you know what? There's one more thing I want to point out on this thing. Uh, as you can see, the buttons on this thing, uh, it is from 1958, so the buttons are uh, they're pretty worn. They tend to get brittle over the years. And on these older tube radios, in order to preset your station, you can't just pull the button out. You have to move it to the right. Uh, pretty far before you can pull it out to preset the station. Um, the uh, the metal used in these uh, it does weaken over the years, and uh, quite frequently when you pull the button to the right, um, that button will stay a little bit to the right. Then you have to kind of you know push it over to the left again after you get your preset station after you get your station preset. Um, I would recommend uh, because these buttons are kind of brittle. Um, if they tend to pull off, I uh, I normally uh, drill holes through them and insert pins to keep them from pulling off but there's so little good plastic left on these buttons that uh, on this on this particular unit I would recommend if the button pulls out when you try to set it uh, I would get in there with a with a needle those pliers and actually move that shaft to the right and then pull it out and then once you get your station preset the way you want it then you can go ahead and put the button back on as long as you're only pushing with the button uh, the buttons will probably last a while uh, but if you're trying to pull on it uh, and put too much pressure on it they're likely to fall apart even more so that's just a little uh, a little notice of caution there so let's go ahead and turn this thing on i've got it uh, all five push buttons set to fm station let's turn it on and we'll just run it through uh Run it through the FM stations real quick. There is St. Jude. Okay, so there's a. That pretty much covers the FM uh, coverage. Uh, now let's switch it to AM. And uh, ordinarily you would just turn the unit off and turn it right back on to change bands on this type of radio. But because the leftmost push button is actually the off switch, we have to be kind of quick to turn it off and then back on like that. And now it's on the AM band. So let's just tune in. Uh, ho hopefully there's still some AM activity. It is uh, sundown. It's after sundown here. So. I think I went the wrong way. Okay. There's a the stronger station that we have in the area. Around 1380. Okay, so now we'll go back to FM. Off, on, back on again, and then we'll push one of our preset buttons to get the FM station. Alrighty, and uh, one more thing we'll test uh, before I get too much further is the line input. And without a uh, without a dedicated aux switch on the radio, uh, what we're stuck with is uh, signal sensing. Let me plug this something into the line input here real quick. And I just have a. Oops. 
Yeah, there we go. And here's what I've done for the aux input. I just put two RCA jacks in back. I prefer using RCA jacks to the standard 3.5 millimeter round jack because the RCA jacks are going to last a lot longer. And uh, you can just get an adapter to go from those RCA jacks to the type of connector you want. And then when the connector fails, all you have to do is replace that adapter cable. You don't have to pull the radio out. Okay, so now I'm going to just run a quick test tone into the aux input and make sure that it switches over to the aux function automatically. So here we go. Okay, that's the uh, left channel, uh, and that also triggered the radio to switch over to aux. And there's our right channel input. And now, since there's no dedicated aux input, there'll be a 20 second delay before the radio comes back. That's uh, due to a VOX circuit, V-O-X, voice operated switch. It's designed to hold on to the aux signal a little longer than it needs to to keep it from constantly switching back and forth between songs and during quiet music passages. So a radio should be coming back any second now. There's our radio back, and, and if you don't like the delay, all you have to do is just turn the unit off, turn it right back on, and it cancels out that delay. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate the, uh, the virtual balance and fader functions, and since this radio did not have a rotary tone control, it had a tone switch, it works differently than uh, other radios on which I've demonstrated this function. Basically, um, I've wired the tone control to where... Um, to where you will have a rotary tone control in the form of the volume control. If you rotate your tone switch all the way to the right, click it all the way to the right, this volume control acts as a temporary tone control. And you can hear it changing from treble to bass. And it can be very confusing, but uh, to make it easier to remember, just remember that whenever this tone switch is all the way to the right, this is a tone control and not a volume control. And to take it back to uh, to the volume control, we just rotate that control, that tone control or tone switch back to where it was before. And then this is once again the volume control. Now it's all controlled digitally and through software, so it takes a little while to get the feel of it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to. Uh, we're going to demonstrate the, uh, the, the the virtual front rear fader, which is uh, always done with the tone control. And since this radio only uses one control for both the volume and tone control, it can be a little confusing. So first I'll do it without even paying attention to the meters, just to show you how I'm doing it. So we're going to we're going to rotate our tone switch to the right to make this a temporary tone control which is what we use to activate the virtual balance and fader functions. Now I'm going to activate our virtual front rear fader by rotating this tone control twice to the right, each time returning it to uh, its original position. So here we go. Okay, there's our beeps, letting us know that now we are, we are adjusting the front rear speaker fading. You can't tell it's tone going from front to rear but I have the front speaker sounding different than the rear speaker, so that's how you can tell. And then later, we'll bring our meters into the picture so you can see that effect. Okay, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna stop adjusting it. After about a second, you'll hear one beep, letting us know that that setting has been saved. And then now you can return your, uh, your volume control to the volume position by taking the tone switch off of the tone setting. We can see the volume control is controlling the volume again. Okay, now we're going to temporarily make this a tone control again by working our tone switch. And now I'm going to activate the, the virtual left-right balance control. The same procedure except we rotate this cone control twice to the left. So here we go. There's our four beeps. Okay, and now we're adjusting, and this you will be able to hear, now this uh, volume control is adjusting your left-right, uh, your left-right balance. Left only, and right only. Okay, I'll take it back to center. I'm going to stop adjusting it. Okay, and now we can take. Uh, now that we've got our balance the way we like it, we can take this tone switch back to the volume control position, and then we can. And that'll once again. Uh, adjust our volume with the volume control. So let's go ahead and uh, now that we've shown how to do that, let's go ahead and bring our output levels into the picture so that we can see the actual results of what we're doing with that. Put our radio back in the left-hand corner there. 
if I can figure out how to do that. There we are. Okay, now we're, once again, I'm going to rotate my tone switch to the right to turn this into a tone control. And now we're going to uh, adjust our, our, our front rear fader, which means we rotate this twice to the right. So here we go. Okay, there's our beeps letting us know that we can now use this control to adjust the front rear. Front only. Rear only. Front only. Rear only. Okay, and back to center. I'm going to stop adjusting it, let it time out. It just timed out. Okay, and now this is adjusting our tone again. You can hear it going from bass to treble. Bass or treble. Okay, so now let's activate our uh, our virtual left-right balance control. Same procedure, except we rotate our volume control twice to the left, which is actually a tone control right now. Oh, it missed it. Okay, there's our four tones, letting us know that we are now adjusting the left-right balance with our volume control, which is actually a tone control right now. I know it's confusing, But if you take a little time to learn how to use it, it's a super cool feature, very handy. Okay, now we're going to let it all time out. Okay, now before we rotate our tone control back to where this is the volume control, we want to make sure that, that we re return our tone control to our listening position, because when we're using it to adjust your virtual left-right balance and front rear fader, it's not a tone control, and it'll sound kind of dull because it acts as if, it, if it's in the center of its range. So right now, the tone control, any time that this tone switch is all the way to the right, then this line control is acting as a tone control. Okay, so now we're gonna, we want this to return to our volume control position, so all we gotta do is rotate our tone switch back to where this is a volume control. And there we go. Alrighty, so now we're gonna turn it off, which is another thing I'm not used to, is, um, that's me, I, I wasn't uh, supposed to do that. That's what we want. I'm pretty used to just using this control to turn the volume, to turn the power on and off. And on this radio, the leftmost push button is actually the off switch. And then to turn the unit back on, you have to press on one of these, uh, one of these uh, tuner buttons, which puts you immediately to the station that that is set at. All right, so let's turn this unit off. Uh, all functions have been tested and found to be working properly. And so on that happy, happy note, I'm going to get on out of here. This is Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. If you have an 8-Track in need of service or a Classic Car AM radio uh, to which you would like to add FM with the possibilities of also adding a Bluetooth, USB reader, um, other cool stuff like that, you can reach me directly at 928-533-9666. My website is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Have fun driving my classic ride. Got a Mustang, buddy, it's a '69, but she ain't sounding so fine. Driving this car, I can't hear the guitar, and all my tapes run slow too. Radio smoking, eight track decks broken. What can I do? Send it to eight track repair center. Eight track repair center. Eight track repair center.